Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a walk around review of the new 2018 Toro Power Max HD 928 OAE. We're going to talk about all the new features, how it differs from the old models, and I'm also going to talk about how this one is a little bit different than the 1028 version of the snowblower. So let's get started. Down in the Let's get the disclaimer out of the way right away. Um, I purchased this machine, as you know, with some of the other videos. Other manufacturers will let me borrow their machines or they give me them to review and uh, demo. Uh, I chose to purchase this one. Uh, it's brand new, brand new design, and I wanted to get the information out to you as fast as possible. Let's start with the dash. The Toro has redesigned the dash a little bit. It's nice and simple. Uh, there's very few controls on it. Along the back side here, of course, are your warnings and your what goes where and so on and so forth. One thing that they have done with the dash, in other, in other words, this kind of looks the same as the older models but they put a metal reinforcement down underneath here now so everything's nice and solid. Uh, there's no give at all in the, the dash. They've also redesigned the quick stick. And the quick stick is a little bit bigger. Um, it, uh, they've also put some metal inside of it, made it a little bit stronger. It's easier to use with your gloves now. And uh, it's really, really easy. It's easier to use than the older version. You don't get that inertia throw like you used to. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The 928 does not have hand warmers. So, there's a little tab here for the switch for the 1028 and the commercial versions. Speed control is metal metal gears, metal tabs, nothing to break or wear out there. The control handles are nice and big so when you pull them down they fit, on, fit, uh, fit in your hands really well. And of course it's got the one hand operation. Toro, like Aaron's, is a what I call a right hand control so if you want to use it you just take, take your right hand, you move over move your chute while things are going and it's real easy to shift this way too so and there are six speeds forward and two in, two in reverse if you'll notice there are no triggers here on the bottom this one uses the automatic steering I'll go into more detail as we do a walk around about the automatic steering and uh, I'm also going to put together another video where we get inside the transmission case and so and take a look at how robust that that auto steer is. All right, let's move on to the lower part of the handles and the control levers, rods, and linkages. Toro has redesigned the bottom of the handles this year to make them a lot more solid than what they used to be. In the past, everybody just took and smashed the end of the tubes and then drilled a couple holes in them and then bolted them to the transmission frame. This year, Toro took the tube and welded it into this channel. And this channel is a lot more is a lot stronger than the the old version, and then it's bolted in down here. So it's a lot more solid. There's no give or flex or anything in this handle. It's a good simple design. It's going to last a long time. If you hear some squawking and 
clunking. There's a pileated woodpecker trying to eat some suet off of a suet feeder out here on the porch of my studio. <laughs> He's pretty clumsy. And the boy, they can make a lot of noise. Anyway, if you take a look at the control cables, the uh, clutch and the impeller control cable on these Toros are heavy duty coated. Uh, the ends are soldered in place and, and uh, they're nice strong connectors. They use the spring adjust and tension out here on the handles. So it's easy to see if they need to be adjusted or not. As you can see, they're a little bit loose when you, and they'll sit and they'll vibrate a little bit when the engine is running. As soon as you put your hand on them and tighten them up, the spring expands and you get the proper tension on your belts. Both of the uh, impeller and the drive control cables are like that. The shift rod, and let's see if I can move this just a little bit. The shift rod is a nice heavy 3 8 inch steel, hardened steel rod. Uh, it's cotter pinned on the top and the bottom. It is adjustable. So you can, it's real easy to adjust your neutral if the machine doesn't want to go right in the right speed uh, for you, you can lengthen or shorten this this rod right up in the control panel and get everything to work correctly for you. It's all out in the open. It doesn't freeze. Uh, there's no nothing for it to bind. No pulleys or anything like that. Any extra stuff to wear out. So it's a good simple design and uh, It'll last you a long time. All right, let's continue around the machine. Toro uses a 16 by 4.5 tire on the Toro PowerMax HD models. This tire is nice and tall, so you get plenty of clearance underneath the snowblower, and it's narrow which allows you to get as much weight as possible on the ground while it's still giving you really good traction. Uh, these tires dig really well. Uh, they also have a really deep tread design to them and it's they're fairly pliable so you get as much traction as you possibly can out of these. They, they're not so soft that they're going to wear out on you anytime soon. In other words, from a residential standpoint, these will last many, many years. Uh, I don't expect them to get dry rot or cracked because uh, they're a nice, nice looking tire. You can also buy snow chains for this model if you think you really need it. Uh, if you're working on uh, gravel or cement, blacktop, that type of stuff, you'll probably never have a need for that. I'll talk about removing the wheel um, in the video where we get into the inside of the transmission and stuff like that. Let's move up here a little bit and while we're on this side, let's look at this oil drain on the engine. Yes, it comes out the side. Um, but it's a decent size, so you can either put a little hose on it or put a little channel made out of cardboard or plastic. Take a take a milk bottle and cut it up to get the oil over the side of the of the uh, tire if you need to. If you notice, there's some indents on the tube, the extension tube there, and that's designed to fit a uh, wrench. So you can loosen up that plug without everything turning out of the side of the engine on you. The reason why they don't really put them out the back or anything like that anymore is uh, if you take this to a dealer and have it have a, the maintenance done, they suck the oil out of these. In other words, they use a closed system so they don't have any oil spills or anything in the dealership. 
Okay, staying on this side of the engine, move up, there's a, this does have a 110 volt electric start, and no, they don't supply you with a power cord anymore, nobody does, but it takes a regular three prong uh, extension cord, just plug it in the back side there, plug it in, plug it into your wall, and then push the red button. Alright, moving over. This is the new LED light that Toro's putting on the PowerMax HD. This thing is really, really bright. Uh, they also moved it up front of the engine here. Uh, this one's tilted back just a little bit yet. I haven't got, looks like it needs a little bit of adjustment. But uh, you won't have any complaints about how much light this thing throws out. It is really, really bright. Skid shoes. The Toro PowerMax HDs come standard with steel skid shoes. There is an optional poly. In other words, if you're, you have pavers or if you've got nice stamped concrete, uh, you, you'll want to switch to the poly ones so they don't scratch. Uh, the, Toro mod, the Toro versions are nice and heavy so they'll last just as long as these steel ones. If you have a lot of sidewalk and stuff that you're doing, um, they also make a set of cast iron skid shoes that will last years and years and years. Let's talk about a new design change that they made to it. If you notice, the front of the auger housing is not straight up and down like the old models. It's rounded in the front and then tipped back at the top. There's a, what that is for is if you have snow drifts and so that are taller than the auger housing, this will allow the snow to drop back, drop down in the front of the machine and drop into the auger assembly easier. Uh, you won't get that snow that just runs over the top of the machine and you get stuck in it and all that other stuff. So this, this uh, slant back auger housing um, is a better design than what they had in the past. I know it's a real minor change but uh, it does make a difference if you if you do a lot of drifts. Toro has a unique auger housing design. I believe it's patented so nobody else can use it. On previous models you saw that this area here was all poly. Now it's called the ACS or the anti-clogging system. What it does is when you get too much snow into the into the snow thrower, snow blower, it offloads the impeller and lets the snow run back down inside instead of clogging the chute or uh, killing your engine. And it gives a it allows the impeller to stay at a higher RPM so it throws better and it also reduces the clogging and heavy wet snow considerably. This year they took out the poly and made this all metal and it's also a little bit larger than what it was before so I expect the, the ACS to work really well on this machine. Alright, so I tipped the snow blower back up on its handles and you can do that with your machine too and not hurt it at all. If you ever want to look inside your impeller housing and uh, or do any maintenance in there. And I'm going to talk about all the different features here and I'm going to readjust the camera as I talk about it. Down on the bottom is a scraper bar, your auger flights, your shear pins, your bearings, gearbox, impeller, shear pins for the impeller, two of them, and uh, we'll talk about each of those individually. The first thing you see when you look in front in the front of this snowblower you see the big aluminum gearbox. I want to make for sure that you understand there's nothing wrong with aluminum. Uh, particularly if it's built heavy and strong like this one is. If you notice this one has reinforced all the way around. It's got heavy heavy ridges and stuff in it so it won't break. 
Toro has always had a good gearbox, but uh, they've made this one even better. One of the biggest things that they've done, biggest changes that they've done is there is no more seam here. You're, it's a top load case, so you take this cover off to do any repairs to it if you ever need to. This eliminates any dripping or leaking uh, of the oil. So yes, you should check your oil in there once a year to make sure there, there's an adequate amount, but these won't these won't leak. They're going to leak at all. They're going to leak here at this seal, but uh, I don't even expect that to happen. One thing else about a Toro is they really don't use shear pins. They do have two sh two pins in here. This is an ax. This shaft inside runs all the way out through here, and uh, there's two grade five bolts that fit here. They will break if you hit something really hard, you know, like the like a cement block or something like that. But uh, most people never never ever break one. Uh, the stuff gets ejected before it'll bust a shear pin. The gearbox is strong enough to handle anything like that. Uh, you'll never tear up a gearbox because of something you hit. Toro also uses sealed uh, heavy duty bearings on the outboard side, both ends. So this is all nice and solid. Uh, because they have the long shaft that goes all the way through, they don't need a center support bracket like some of the other models have. So it's a good strong design. Let's see, let me move back, just move this back a little bit instead of stopping and starting. The uh, augers on this is what's called an open flight design. So as it's pulling the snow in, it's also bringing air into it too to make it as light and light as possible when it hits. So when it hits the impeller, it shoots out and doesn't clog up the machine. Taro has done a couple little things that uh, are kind of different that I haven't really noticed before on other models. They have little tabs here on these uh, serrated augers and that breaks the snow so the snow doesn't clog up and clog, clog the whole system up. It's kind of a nice little feature. It is a large impel, uh, auger. It's a 14 inch auger. Let me just keep moving the camera around for you. Uh, it's a large 14 inch auger so it will handle as much snow as you want to try and push through it. Um, it doesn't want to clog up or, or uh, chunk into the back end of the impeller and into the, into the back of the housing. Sorry. Toro has put a lot of design into the impeller itself. Um, one thing they wanted to do is with this new design is to get the longest throw they possibly could out of this so it throws the snow the farthest and uh, they do they are advertising up to 57 feet. Um, the 928 and the 1028 as listed in the brochures only says 45 feet but it uses the same impeller as the the 32 inch model and the commercial model so I'm, I think that might be a misprint in the documentation not uh, and I think this thing is actually going to throw further. If you take a look at it, one of the first things about this is this is this disc is concave what that does is that if you got really heavy, heavy wet snow, it doesn't stick to that disc and start plugging things up. Or is that concave feature of it just pushes the snow off a lot easier. Also the paddles, they're reinforced on the back. They have an angle bracket and a second angle bracket that it's all welded to so everything is nice and solid. 
the cup of the impeller itself, and it's a 14 inch impeller by the way, the larger one, the cup is probably the most aggressive that I've seen in a long time. Um, it'll be interesting to see how well this uh, nine horse motor handles this, this strong cup. Everybody else uses a smaller design and uh, some of the cheaper models even use a flat blade to throw the snow out. So it'll be interesting to see how this works. Everything is concave. There's no sharp angles at all in this cup. So heavy wet snow it should, should just slide off and, and it should really do a good job of throwing snow. I can't wait to get it into some snow and actually try it. One last thing, let's talk about the anti-clog the anti-clog system or, or ACS. This one is larger than the poly. There's more room up here in the top and the impeller is deeper down into the housing than what they've had before. This gives you a lot of room to have, get a lot of snow in there and still have the engine run at its high RPM. Um, in other words, if you get too much snow in on a typical snowblower, it'll pull the engine down and down and down and it won't throw that far. It'll start to plug up. With this big open design up in here, uh, the snow has a chance to churn around and allows the impeller to stay at a higher RPM. Other models, and I'll use the Aarons as an example, they have a system where if there's too much snow in the machine, it'll offload it back over into this area. And if you look at a errands that's running really hard, you'll see the snow blowing out this way in this corner over here. This one, the way it's designed, the snow comes into here and it would blow out this way but they put this little panel in here to help, e help it hold even more snow. If you look at a Cub Cadet 3 stage, this is all real close clearance in here. In fact, they actually build a, build a panel out way out into the machine and they use just brute force horsepower to shove the snow into the impeller and then out. This one is more efficient from a horsepower standpoint. In other words, I think this will easily throw as much or more snow than like the 3X designs, but it, you won't need as big of an engine to do it. Uh, this model here, the 928, uses a 265cc engine. The 1028, I think it is the 302 engine. And uh, then the professional models, they put a 12 and 14 horse engine on them. So we'll see how it works. I expect it to work really well. Now let's continue on around the machine. Oh, one more little thing. It does have the drain hole down there in the bottom of the um, impeller housing. All right, we're just about done. I'm going to go over a little more about the chute and then we'll cover the engine as the last piece. This year Toro decided to go with all metal design and they went with a double jointed deflector. What that does is that allows you to have a long extended chute but also have more control if you want to be close by. I'll point out a couple things on it. Number one they use a nice heavy cable, nice heavy clamp. Uh, it's a riveted or, or crimped connector. It has a nice rubber boot on it here so snow doesn't get down and freeze into the, uh, into the cable. Nice heavy metal here. Nice heavy bracket, nice heavy spring. Correct size, correct size bolts. And uh, all around it's nice, nice and solid. It's got a full hinge across it and when you use it you'll see it bends together so you can get really close if you need to 
and you can get really far away if you want to throw it as far as possible. And it shines, moves around very nice, very easily. Let me show you the inside here a little bit. All right, my light's in the way here just a little bit. But if you'll see that it has that uh, rubber flaps so you don't get any blowback inside the deflector. That's also bolted in. Those are not rivets to, that'll vibrate loose over time. These are bolts with lock nuts on. So if you ever tear one of those accidentally or anything like that, uh, you can uh, you can easily replace it. It's not just a piece of rubber. It's actually a laminated, you know, like a like a car tire, where there's two layers and then there's cords in between. So it's it's going to wear a long time for you. Last but not least on the chute, let's look down here. The discharge out of the impeller housing is square. The tube, the, the chute itself is round. It's big. My big hands, plenty, plenty of room in there. I guess it's at least four inches around. There is a poly guide down there to hold the bottom of the chute in place. But there's no bearing support or anything on that. It's just a little guide. So the way it's designed, it won't catch any snow uh, and clog up on you at all. All right, so let's move on. Let's get the engine, and then we'll be done. <clears throat> all right, Toro puts their own engines on snow blowers now. Uh, this is the Toro Premium engine and it looks like a monster uh, and it is set up nice uh, the controls are nice and big on it and uh, everything is easy to use the uh, gas cap is a click cap where it's got the little tabs on it the fuel capacity on it is 3.6 quarts so with this engine you should get at least an hour run time Per tank of fuel. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Nice snow mitten glove recoil. It has a the throttle is here and it's backwards of some of the other brands just to let you know. Forward is over here to the right. Slow it down and then it there is a stop here on the left when you push it towards the left. This is your fuel shutoff, and right now it's off, and then there's little markings on here to show you. Turn it on. Choke. There's no notches in the choke. There's a little bit of annotation. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little stiff, so it will hold if uh, it's really, really cold out. You need to run a little choke to keep your engine running smoothly. The typical kids key to keep the kids from playing with the machine primer bulb of course remember when you're doing a primer bulb make for sure you cover that little hole when you pump it so make sure you have your fuel turned on make sure you have your choke set when the engine is cold pump that three times or so she should start right away for you <clears throat> oil filter or oil fill with a dipstick. The muffler is here. When you first get it, after you use it, after you know, first 10 minutes to a half hour, the engine is going to smell, and that's just burning off uh, paint that's on the muffler. The spark plug is easy to get a hold of and change out if you need to. I showed you early on where the oil drain is at on it. This uh, fuel tank looks big, but it's still only a 3.6 quart. So, this is the end of this video. Uh, I'm going to make another video shortly. That's going to talk about the inside of the machine. We're going to look inside the transmission. We're going to look inside the uh, gear case here for the auger. And a few other things. Uh, so you know, have a complete knowledge of what's what this snowblower is all about. 
have any questions of course uh, ask them down below tell me what you think of this video if you'd like to see more videos like this please subscribe um, and we'll go from there thank you down in